Oh, hey, Kenneth with Portal Insurance here. I'm an agent at... <laughs> ah! <laughs> I swear to that is the only reason the insurance guys is successful is because we we batch recorded like the first 120 episodes before we started doing them weekly like we're doing now and it gave us enough breathing room because we weren't making any money on it in the beginning and barely are now it gave us enough breathing room that we could release them without it actually taking a bunch of time out of our day you know it was easier for me back then to take off two days record straight for two days than it was to give up an hour and a half every single week you know i don't put any thought into mine other than what i'm posting and making sure it's the right time like i can't tell you what i'm going to post on tuesday of next week most people can but but part of that is part of that is like understanding the flow and the feel of my audience. You know what I mean? A post that I might think work, will work on next Tuesday, by the time next Tuesday comes around, I'm like, yeah, I have a gut feeling that's not gonna work. You know, or even like super literal, like going really dark, if there's a terrorist attack next Tuesday, I don't wanna be posting about, make sure you get business insurance. You know what I mean? So, so there's current events too, you know? Uh, you'll, and you'll notice that too, like big brands, like whenever there's a national event, like when the Capitol was stormed or like something like real big like that, big brands like don't post. And the ones that do are ones that don't take their social very seriously. I'm looking at my LinkedIn feed right now and there's a post from uh, three days ago that's still getting comments and reactions this morning. That would almost never happen on on, on Instagram. Right, um, exactly. After the hour on Instagram, it's pretty much dead, it's which is why you can post a bunch on there. You just gotta make sure that that prior post has had its run out. You know what I mean? You don't wanna post, you know, I, that's a big mistake I see. The two, two big mistakes I see from a lot of folks, they are either posting at the wrong time, and I know it's the wrong time without looking at their analytics because it's like 10 o'clock at night or super early in the morning, or they'll post a video. They have so much content they don't know what to do with it. They'll post a video, and then 35 minutes later, they'll post another video. Like that second video is gonna, at best, take some of the steam away from the first one. You know, you wanna give it time to run out. I've only been noticing it the last couple weeks. Some of the newer insure tech carriers, Openly is a good example, I'm a big fan of Openly, um, are bypassing the agency management systems altogether and they're connecting directly to these CRMs. So the big problem with your traditional carriers and the big problem with the management systems is if they have APIs, they don't want to give them. And if they do give them, they're not as good. So what's happening is you have these newer insure tech carriers they are like, yeah, I'll give you the API. We have it, here it is. And then you have these CRMs that are like, we'll damn sure give you the APIs. So what's happening is you have some of these insure tech carriers that are just linking up directly to the CRM, which is gonna lead to so many good things that's gonna have a trickle down effect to leading to better experience for the client. You know, how do you become the Amazon of insurance? You make it really easy for the client to do business with you. Side note, I quit my job and I had talked to exactly zero carrier reps, reps when I quit my job. I didn't wanna, I still feel, I, I still, Alpha as a company, I still like them, I still appreciate them, they did a lot for me. I didn't wanna muddy those waters and be talking to carrier reps, you know. So I had one carrier, Coastal Select Insurance, that um, I was their number one agent in 2018 when I was with Alpha and we wrote through them and that included all the independent agents. So I called them first the day after I quit and, and she get Kelly rep there is a very good friend of mine, gave me my first appointment 
I got, and normally they don't give appointments until you're at least like a million in premium. Um, I was lucky enough that she had actually worked as a rep at several other companies and was really well connected. And she introduced me to the next person who introduced me to the next person who introduced me to the next person. Um, so in a nutshell, that's kind of what we did. But when agents ask me this question, the thing that I tell them is, Hey, there's nothing wrong with the cluster group. It just wasn't for me. I, I, I had that in my head, like, Hey, I'll fall back on that if I need to. But what you have to do, here's what you have to understand as an agent trying to get an appointment. 99% of the agents, and this is, I don't mean this is any offense to any agent. 99% of the agents that these reps are talking to asking for appointments are either average or appear average. You have to show them how you are not average. Okay? How do you do that? You do that by the way you present yourself professionally, the way you talk, you're well spoken, you have a plan. Hey, this is what we're gonna do. You show them a business plan. I know business plans are dumb and people hate writing business plans and that sort of thing. Write a business plan, write a good business plan, send that to them even if they don't ask for it. 99% of the agents these reps talk to are, going to are never going to be anything but one person shows. Not that there's anything wrong with one person shows, but if you're not going to be a one person show, explain to them how you're going to hire people, how your model is going to be different. And so that's that's kind of what I did when I talked to them. I said, okay, look, and this is so, so here in Mobile, Alabama, most of the independent agencies are either your older family agencies or they are a non standard bucket shop which has created sort of a vacuum for the captive agencies to write the really, really good personal lines in, in smaller commercial accounts, okay? Whereas the, the older family agencies go after the bigger commercial, the bucket shops go after what they go after. So what I did is I came in and said, okay, here's what we're gonna do for the first year. Yeah, and we're, we plan to do big commercial, and we're doing that now, Mike, but for the first year, we're gonna go after the State Farm, the Farmers, and the Allstate Club. We're gonna go after the better, commercial lines, I mean personal lines accounts. We're not gonna do this and we're not gonna do this, we're gonna do this. So I think that had a big play in, in differentiating us. Like they're not used to hearing that. They were used to hearing, oh, we're gonna go after big commercial and or, or we're gonna we're gonna go after the non-standard stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I started in the industry in 2011. Uh, at the time I was in college and managing um, many of you may not know about this company. It's a company called Southern Link, and they sell cell phones that also double as like two-way radios. And they're very popular in rural areas because a lot of farmers use them because they can get service uh, you know, that you can't get on normal cell phones. So I was managing that store, kind of managing that store. I wasn't the manager. And so it's a very hard product to sell. And, uh, a buddy of mine that was selling life insurance at the time came by and he uh, watched me sell unit after unit and was like, man, you can sell this, you can sell life insurance. So I quit my job, went to work with him, Liberty National Life Insurance Company, basically selling life insurance door to door, not actually door to door, as people think of it, but pretty close. And I was so green that I remember day one, I was like, what's a full life policy? He's like, uh, that's a whole life policy? And, uh, and so it was just super green, but, but I remember like, I, I really liked the concept of being a professional. You know, I liked sitting down with people and talking about their financial situation and things like that. And kind of recognized about six months into that journey at Liberty that PNC was where it's at. Um, for a couple reasons. One, you know, the volume is there. And then two, you know, if Rick and I were to go I don't know where you're located at right now, but if let's say you're in Tampa and we go to the top floor of the tallest building in Tampa and look out, everything we can see is insured, right? Versus if we went to the Super Bowl last week, and I know there's only 25,000 people at the Super Bowl, but not everybody at that Super Bowl is gonna buy life insurance, right? That was the Berta Ford podcast. And <laughs> having a videographer on staff is always good. Like, hey, send me that footage, tell me what we were doing on that. Day. Everybody screws up sometimes. I had a very important meeting that 
the meeting before ran long, we got really like into it and then looked up and I was 70 minutes late and now they're not on. Oh well. Crocky mate, found an insurance agent in the wild. I would love to create a series of videos for not to try to pick you up as a client, not to do anything. I just want to be able to say 12 months down the road that we've worked with a carrier. It can be simple stuff, it can be complex stuff, it can be whatever, because eventually I would like to get to the point to where, you know, say three years down the road, we go create content for carriers as well. If that's, and I think we can help you guys. I have some pretty good ideas of how you guys can reach some, reach some different states and stuff. Uh, with that, um, you know, I love, I, I think, finding an agent and have him give a, you know, what I call a big ass testimonial for and then create a piece of content around that, run that as an ad to agents, I think could work. I don't, I don't think there's any better piece of content to get people's interest than showing them a testimonial from someone that is like them. You know what I mean? What's up? It's, uh, I think it's like 5.40 a.m. at the airport. Wanted to, wanted to have something in here for Friday. Um, I'm at the Pensacola Airport. My favorite part about the Pensacola Airport, other than the fact that there's a Chick-fil-A, which happens to be closed today, is this um, uh, very aggressive, aggressive robot that talks to you when you get your ticket to park. Please wait. Take the ticket. Welcome. But I wanted to reach out to everybody and let you guys know or put put in here that we have a big announcement coming next week And if you want to get dibs on that big and this is not like a marketing announcement This is like a legit announcement um, Not trying to build up just for the sake of building up, but if you are Interested in getting first dibs and hearing about this announcement first text I'm in uh, to 251-237-9383, text I'm in, and you will get this announcement first, probably Tuesday-ish. Thanks.